Hi and welcome back to Trendy Technologies and also DevOps Factory. So we are today um, going to discuss about Kafka and a lot of people are asking why Kafka because we have done um, implemented a project with Kafka in the DevOps. Right. So a lot of people are asking like why Kafka and what what exactly the benefits of Kafka and also whoever are going for the Kafka interviews if you are a Kafka administrator if you are going for the Kafka development most of the interviews will ask like why Kafka like we why you are using Kafka, okay? Because there are many choices, like when you are talking about publisher, uh, a public, a publisher and subscriber method, okay? So there are a lot of, lot of um, technologies which have published subscribe messaging systems, okay? So whenever we are, whenever I'm saying public, uh, publish and subscribe messaging system, there are something called Rabbit MQ, we have uh, IBM MQ, we have Microsoft MQ, and we have um, active MQ. Okay, so there are a lot of products in the market, but why you are choosing Kafka over them is one of the questions. Okay, so and what makes Apache Kafka a good tool when we are comparing with the other products? So first point is like when we are talking about Kafka, Kafka will have multiple producers. Okay, so what do you mean by multiple producers? You guys need to know uh, basic of uh, producer and consumer concepts, which is already there in our channel. But that is in Telugu, no problem, like I'm going to do this in English also. But what are the multiple producers, when you are talking about multiple producers, this is one of the advantages of the Kafka. So Kafka is able to seamlessly handle multiple producers, nothing but whether the clients are using many topics or the same topic, they can come and connect to the Kafka, okay, and they can produce the messages to the Kafka. It might be a single topic. Or it might be a it might be multiple topics. Okay, so all the producers might go and hit the same topic. Nothing but they are uh, publishing the messages to the topic. Or else it might be a producers going to individual topics. Okay, so this makes the system ideal for aggregating the data from many front ends. Okay, so and also it is very consistent when you are talking about. Uh, data in the Kafka, it is very consistent and the major major thing is like it is ideal for the aggregating the data. Okay, so whenever we are saying aggregating the data, so Kafka is very very advantageous over there. Okay, okay. so for example, like if I want to see the page views, okay, so page views of my web server. Okay, so I have a topic. So there might be multiple microservices. Okay, so there might be multiple microservices running on the front end okay so all the microservices of the page views might be catering to the same topic and the consumer what can the consumer do they can consume the messages within the same topic they don't need to go to multiple topics and get all the information and then segregate the data then do the um, r and or to do the uh, page views or average page views or the total page views of the page okay so that is not the case here okay so Whenever we are talking about the Kafka, okay, so Kafka is nothing but like Kafka, how it works, okay. So it serves content to the users via like if it, if it is serving the uh, number of users are hitting to the web, uh, web server and if you want to see the page views, so it will go and hit to the one single topic, okay. So it is like a single stream of page views, okay. So we are all the applications, whatever the applications you are using the front end, all the applications views will be the single stream okay so now the consumers um, job will be very easy that without having a coordinate like no need to coordinate with multiple topics and get the page views okay so they can go to the one topic and they can get all the page views whatever they require okay so this is one of the major advantages when we are talking about kafka because it has multiple producers and also it have multiple consumers as well okay so whenever I'm saying consumers, okay, so whoever the, who, who are consuming the message, like whenever we are putting some message onto the Kafka topic, someone need to consume it, right? So in addition to the multiple producers, Kafka is also designed for multiple consumers, nothing but to read any single stream of message without interfering with each other's client, okay? So uh, you can go and talk to the single uh, topic, which is with respect to that client, if you if I, if I have a client A, so consumer wants to pick the message from the client A, okay, so they can go and pick the message from the client A. And also there will be multiple consumers, okay, so 
with the same um, topic a someone wants to if, if i have someone with xyz consumer they can also go and consume that messages with respect to the um, permissions we give on to the topic okay so there will be multiple producers and also multiple consumers then next major advantage is disk based retention okay so what do you mean by disk based retention so kafka not only have multiple producers of multiple consumers but also it has durable message retention what do you mean by durable message retention okay so nothing but whenever we are sending the messages okay so whenever there is a uh, message got produced under the um, uh, topic it is not mandatory that consumer should pick the message in the real time nothing but whenever there is a message it's not mandatory that consumers are going to come and pick it on a real time basis because messages are written to disk okay so whatever the messages are coming into the producer those messages are written onto the disk okay so whenever we are moving into the disk that will be stored with configurable retention rules every topic you can configure retention rules on every topic okay so for example if for one topic you want it for 7 days if for, for one topic you want it for 30 days for one topic you want it for 60 days you can do as per the configuration of the policies or the complaints uh, things like whatever the complaints you are following in your organization okay so it depends on the retention rules and it is per topic basis which allows for which is allowing you to have different stream of messages to have different amount of retentions depending on the needs okay so whatever the needs you have okay and also durable retention what do you mean by durable retention here again whenever we are having a retention of the messages you should not be worried about the um issues on the consumer end for example whenever there is a huge number of messages produced on the topic so whenever there are huge number of messages produced on the topic there might be a traffic lag there might be a network issue on the consumer right so you should not be worried like messages will be lost okay because this is having a disk based retention nothing but all the messages will be sitting on the disk so that whenever the consumer comes back they can pick the message with this will happen okay so when, whenever you are troubleshooting you can see the lag nothing but what are the messages produced by the uh, uh, producer and what are the messages consumed by the consumer and if you see zero lag nothing but the messages everything was consumed by the consumer but if you see any lag for example if i see 1000 nothing but 1000 messages are still on the topic where consumer need to pick that up okay so that you will get in the troubleshooting uh, of your kafka okay anyway this is one of the issues you can see in the real time okay and also you should not be worried about performance of the consumer or you should not be worried about backing up the data or backing up whatever the producer is getting uh, uh, publishing the data right so you you can easily say that all the data has been stored on the disk so that whenever your consumer is ready or whenever there is a problem you can restart your consumer then again you can pick the messages from the disk okay so this is about disk based retention okay so that is very much very much uh, more advantages when you compare with ibm mq or if you are comparing with any other rabbit mq or active mq because there is no disk based retention in those uh, tools okay so in those um, uh, technologies okay so another one is scalable okay so whoever are already into the kafka you might you guys might know already like kafka is a kafka's flexible scalable uh, makes it easy to handle any amount of data like uh, you can have single broker or you can expand that so if you have a small development cluster you can go for three brokers if you see like there is a huge uh, environment for you you can go for 100 brokers also so it is much more scalable and also you can have larger clusters of tens or even hundreds of brokers okay so that grows over the time I, like whenever the data is scaling up okay so whenever the data is coming up or data is increasing you can scale your brokers as per your requirement okay so next other advantage is 
high performance okay so what do you mean by high performance so all of the features when we are talking okay so when you are talking about multiple producers multiple consumers displaced retention scalable okay so when we are making all this together to make apache kafka a publish subscribe messaging system with excellent performance under high load okay so whenever there is a high load also the performance is very good because of all the things which we have discussed now because producers consumers and brokers can all be scaled out to handle very large messaging streams with ease okay so whatever the data is coming how much the amount of data is coming we are not bothered because you can scale everything like you can scale producers you can scale up your consumers you can scale up your uh, brokers you can scale out you can scale in okay so you can do all that stuff okay so this can be done by still providing subsequent message latency okay so from producing a message to availability to consumers See, so the latency will be very less so next is your features okay so um, what are the features we have in the um, kafka okay so there is a lot of features okay so you guys can go into the apache kafka page and you can see all the data ecosystem of the kafka but what all the use cases okay so where we are using kafka okay so what all the use cases we have in the kafka okay so kafka use cases are like whenever we wanted to track something okay so you can say like uh, tracking or you can say activity tracking okay you can go for the activity tracking nothing but the um, use case okay so it was designed for linkedin okay so if you guys know how this kafka has come so kafka was designed by or designed at linkedin so in that of user activity tracking so they wanted to see like how in the linkedin website how users interact with uh, how many users are coming in and how users are interacting with the front end applications okay so which generates message regarding action the user is taking so for example if user want to um, do a click or if you want to open a page okay so all this tracking has been done by the kafka so kafka has come up in that fashion okay so linkedin is the one which got like they have the one who created the kafka and they have given it to the open source that is to apache next is messaging so what do you mean by messaging again like you know uh, whenever you want to send a message for example a simple example is your mobile phones okay so uh, your um, uh, telecom provider will be sending a message to your mobile right so then you will be consuming it so he is producing the message you will be consuming the message for example you have switched off your mobile or your network is not there okay so at that point of time you won't get the messages but whenever you switch on your uh, mobile you will get that message automatically okay so that is how the messaging works okay so you are getting the notifications so for even your emails right so whenever you want to say you whenever you want to get the notification so this is happens using producer and consumer okay so this is the simple example so that you guys can get a easy hands on okay so next example is your metric and logging okay so how it is used for metrics and logging right so there are so many tools which will uh, uh, pick the logging systems okay now for example when you go to the elastic beats okay so elastic beats is one of the examples where it is a log shipper so whatever the logs is happening on your machine it will just pick all that and if you want to make that and if you want to move that to the kafka you can move that to the kafka so all the mess all the logging all the logging information we are producing it to the kafka okay and also you can segregate the uh, logging with the topics for example i want to have a heartbeat on one topic metric bit on one topic and i want to have a file bit on one topic and i want to have packet bit on one topic because there are a lot of bits with respect to the elastic okay so every topic we we can say that you can hold every uh, bits with respect to the topic and also you can store that you can do analysis you can move it to the hadoop if you want you can you move it to the elastic search you can do the analytics you can do analysis of the data you can move it to the tableau you can do the uh, dashboards whatever you want to have the um, analysis you can do okay 
so that is how it is also helpful to work and most of the use cases most of the organizations are using for metric and logging and messaging and also activity tracking and also there are some other things like uh, commit log and also stream processing what do you mean by stream processing so most of the organizations are also using kafka for the stream processing so stream processing is a huge topic again like you can talk more and more about stream processing okay but what exactly like most of the time when we are talking about kafka so everything we can we can talk it as a stream processing because the term which uh, typically used to refer the applications that provide similar functionality to map or reduce processing so in hadoop when we are talking about stream processing so it is like we are talking about map or reducing the process okay so typically this is most of the time it is um, uh, used in the kafka as well okay so uh, when we are talking about stream frameworks which allows users to write small applications to operate uh, on kafka messages or performing tasks such as counting metrics uh, partitioning messages for efficient processing or uh, transforming messages using data for multiple sources okay so these are all things comes under the stream processing stream processing is a huge topic okay so we'll discuss that whenever um, uh, in the coming days anyway okay so these are all the use cases which are used in the kafka so whenever you are going for the kafka administration or development most of the time you will see these use cases okay so most of the time uh, they, that might be a messaging platform or it might be a a metric and logging platform or streaming processing or activity tracking so these are all the major things and how it got up or how uh, kafka has came into the picture because of activity tracking done by the linkedin and they have created the kafka later they have given it to the open source that is to apache so that so the right now you can go and get the uh, kafka it's an open source you can download the um, binaries and you can work on and if you know telugu and if you are uh, uh, if you have already seen you can you, you might have already seen if you go into our channel try tree technologies if you know telugu you can watch that video because that uh, i have done end to end kafka administrator video i'll i'll do that in english as well but it will take some time but most of the people are asking why kafka so this is what it is okay so why kafka so these are all the advantages of kafka Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. Have a great day. Bye.